So then, Super Bunny, let's talk sports. Don't laugh. Okay. I can talk sports. Shut up. I can totally talk sports. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, hey, bro. I, I don't think Richardson is going to make uh, seven triples this quarter. I, 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 it's not looking good for him. It's not looking good. Yeah. Yeah. And he can talk sports too. (laughs) So do you think, you think Dallas is going all the way again? They're, they're leading, they're leading the league in recovery possessions. Yeah, I hope not, because I fucking hate Dallas. Oh, yeah, everybody hates Dallas, yeah. but man, they, they know how to play. Yeah, they they know how to play. They know how to play. But they'll so, never, they, their cheerleaders have never even been the same. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's, let's uh, this isn't what the bit is about, but I just want to prove that I can talk sports, and I just want to have a serious sports moment here, okay? Okay. Dude, Brock Lesnar is a fucking joke now. Yeah? Yeah. He is a joke. Back in my day, when he was still young, he could do a 20-minute match, a 35-minute match at a pay-per-view and seem dominant and destroy people. But now, like, he's in his 40s. He's got no stamina. He has no big arsenal of moves. He only knows, like, two or three moves. And literally, five minutes into a match... He's winded as shit. He's having a hard time breathing. And his whole body becomes as red as a fucking roid rage tomato. (laughs) It's really sad. There was just a pay-per-view and he's the champion. And it it upsets me because he's the champion, but he doesn't wrestle full time. So he's one of those like, I'm the champion and I will appear for every other pay-per-view. Yeah. Or every third pay per view, but he's still the champion. And and there are times when like he won't even show up for like two or three weeks. Oh, but but his mouth will be there. Uh, 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 Paul Heyman will be there okay. talking for Brock Lesnar because he, he still can't talk for shit. Yeah. But he just had a pay per view, and literally like five minutes into the match, he can't breathe. He's all red, and he's messing up all these moves. And it's just what what the hell happened to you? <laughs> like you used to be, you used to be the shit. Yeah, you know, you used to be this big, unstoppable monster. And now it's just oh god, it's like depressing to even look at you. Like literally, that was the worst pay per view match that i have seen in a long time and i only saw like like two or three matches from the pay-per-view because i don't even i don't bother with pay-per-views unless it's the royal rumble or maybe wrestlemania other than that i try not to care but i heard that this brock lesnar match was going to be amazing and it's like yeah but i've also been paying attention to these to what happens in these pay-per-views and as far as i can tell he cannot wrestle more than a 12 minute match anymore (laughs) It's like a, he's become the WWE's Mike Tyson, where it's like, oh, let's hype this match for a month and a half. The biggest match in the world. The biggest match ever. Yeah. This is the biggest match of Brock Lesnar's career. And then the pay-per-view happens, and oh, it's an 11-minute match. The end. Yeah. It's like, damn, if I actually paid for this pay-per-view instead of just streaming it live for free somewhere, then I would have been really upset. I, I I can't I can't blame you. Yeah, I remember the Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson pretty much like got me out of boxing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Because I no, was my a- dad would buy my dad would buy like every Mike Tyson pay per view because all of the people who all the promoters who were promoting these Mike Tyson fights did such a good job of building up the scrubs that were fed to Mike Tyson. Yeah. And it didn't matter how many times, but my dad would buy the hype and they'd go, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, so, yeah, Mike Tyson, sure, Stevie, Mike Tyson is is undefeated, sure, but this next guy, uh, Phil Whiteson, he could, he could really take Mike Tyson down. This guy's amazing. 
Stevie, <laughs> this really is going to be a challenge. You just watched this pay-per-view. Oh, and it was a 20-second match. Yeah. Oh, I paid $50 for this. <laughs> That's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, it, I don't know, but he, I, I can tell you he wasn't getting hardly any of that money. <laughs> like, he was making an insane amount of money that was all going to, uh, what's his name? What's the name? Crazy hair guy? Crazy Don, Don King. Yeah, Don King was getting, like, all of his money. But his matches were insane, and they'd build up these massive matches, and then he'd have... It was two and a half dollars a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's how much my dad paid? Yeah, yeah. Two and a half dollars a second. <laughs> anyway, this isn't about Botch Lesnar. This is about the NFL. Okay. God damn it, I've always hated the NFL. And I still do. Yes. Um, uh, NFL players and the major modern American sports in general, they are paid way too much. The NFL league isn't doing enough to stop players' brains from corroding yes. from repeated brain injuries. And let's not forget that the NFL sees its players do drugs and get DUIs and beat their wives and girlfriends and uh, dog fighting and, uh-huh. and the league just goes, oops, whoopsie daisy, suspended for three whole games, that'll learn ya. <laughs> oh, you beat your wife again? Oh, well, nine more times and we won't allow that. <laughs> here's your here's your three hundred million dollars. Yes. So I hate the NFL, but now there's a massive wave of angry people, all white, too, which is interesting. Yes. Who are pissed at the NFL and they blame evil liberals like us. So um, I guess yay for us. Yeah, I know. How the fuck did we get on the NFL side? I don't know. How did, know. how did, yeah. No, it's not about being on the NFL I'm, side. I'm confused. <laughs> it's not about being on the side of the NFL. It's about being on the side of right. Yes. And white people are pissed off because they're Trump supporters. And oh my God, this black guy took a knee. Yeah. And they can't stand that. You're you're disrespecting the Constitution. No, no, you guys are disrespecting the Constitution. You guys are disrespecting the soldiers who fought for your right for that Constitution. Yeah. Like, they they fought wars so that he could have that fucking right to sit down. During the- yeah. You know. And that so, is and and yeah. and that is it. That is the ultimate sign of no. Black people cannot protest in any way, shape, or form. Exactly. Like, you know what? You will fight tooth and nail to keep all those guns that killed how many in Las Vegas? Injured how many Mm -hmm. in Las Vegas? But you, the second a black man tries to use his constitutional right to silently protest, you fucking pitch a fit. And suddenly the Constitution has no place in this argument because it's a black man trying to stand up for something he believes in. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, my new favorite type of YouTube video is um, old white person burning merchandise. Yeah, that's my yeah, that's my new favorite uh, uh, genre of YouTube video. There are all these people and they're burning all of their merchandise. And um, um, you guys are idiots, not for burning the merchandise, but for buying so fucking much of it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I literally, like, I'm burning all of my merchandise. And then you see, like, a truck backing up. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, first things first, I'm burning my NFL uh, uh, jacket, my NFL hat, my 85 NFL shirts. Okay, yeah. now it's time for the underwear. I've got 32 pairs of NFL underwear. I'm going to be burning my NFL bed set. I'm going to be burning my NFL. Okay, okay, this will be, be an 18-part video. As I burn all of my NFL merchandise, it's going to take about three and a half weeks. Yeah. <laughs> like you're an idiot for buying so much anyway. And also, all of these NFL teams are just major corporations. You might as well just walk around. You just might as well just walk around with a shirt that says Kotex on it. Mm-hmm. Eleanor, stop your screaming. Other people can Actually, have things. Actually, she's hungry. 
Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just trying to get her to stop screaming every five seconds. I'm going to put her here, and she's going to try to grab it. Okay. Okay, so I'm switching spots with Max. Max, I'll sit over here. So, where was I? Oh, yes. Um, and, and because the right has become so full of paranoia. Yeah. Basically, everything is an evil liberal plot. Mm -hmm. Basically, everything is an evil liberal plot. And I've got a wonderful, I've got a wonderful thing here from uh, right-wing radio host, radio commentator, Sheila Zelinsky. I had never even heard of her before. But she said in an interview, quote, I told you the NFL was out of the bowels of hell and nothing more than a propaganda machine. <laughs> <laughs> with sheep who are brainwashed every night of the week with the alpha gamma theta waves the delta waves luring people into trances slipping people into mass hypnosis that's declassified folks high level mind control projects have been exposed it's on record tv that noise box it is the most disgusting invention ever made i think the nfl is pure evil it is anti-christian anti-family anti-patriot anti-constitutional anti-gun and anti-american for sure talk about wow. your the camp training that's right the nfl is an extension of the tsa the dhs the globalist agenda and fema every nfl stadium is a fema camp in hiding unquote <laughs> yeah so i'm excited for for the nfl now because i can't wait for them to all turn into fema camps and we once again uh, let's round up all the Christians. Yes. That's, that's what I keep getting promised. Mm -hmm. I keep getting promised a rounding up of the Christians and it keeps not happening. Very upset about this. Very, since, very upset. since at least since the fifties. Yeah. Cause yeah. we've watched the films. <laughs> yes, we have. And it's just upset. It's upsetting. That it's not happening. I'm very upset about that. But I'm I'm uh, more upset that another rapture has come and gone, and these assholes are still around, still here, still here. You know what would be funny? You know what would be funny is and I just came up with this. What if the rapture has happened a number of times? It's just that all of the Christians suck now. <laughs> Yeah. What if the rapture did happen and, and God is up in heaven going, now it is time for all of the good Christians to rise. Rise, my children. Rise. How come no one's rising? <laughs> Why is no one? Oh, my God. All of you guys suck now. Okay. We're going to have another rapture in, in eight months. Christians, get your shit together. <laughs> And then literally the rapture has happened like 35 different times and God's just there going, again? <laughs> Come on, guys. All you have to do is ask for forgiveness. That's all you have to do. All you you have... don't even have to get that homeless yeah. man money if you don't want to. Yeah. Just quit killing hookers. All you have to do is be nice <laughs> to people. Well, we are being nice to people, but gays aren't people, right? And God's like, ah, oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, my son, you guys are pissing me off. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, screw Donald Trump. Because yeah. he got these protests and turned them into being about the flag. Oh, oh, this person took a knee because he hates the flag, everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell? This isn't about the flag. It's about the fact that as a minority, you could just be shot and killed for no reason right now. Yeah. Like, right now, I could be shot and killed. It could be by a cop. It could be by, you know, an old white person. It could be by a gun lover. It could be by someone who disagrees with me. It could even be by someone who just doesn't like the color of my skin. And here's the kicker the world we live in right now, whoever shot me, whether it's a cop or a, or a, or a regular person, um, that person would get away with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Like, it doesn't matter if, if I look scary or if I have a weapon. None of that matters. I could literally just be driving and be shot and killed now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, honey. Dang. <laughs> Natasha just threatened my life again. Did not. Can't be proven. I really can't can't think of what could happen in my life that would justify me calling a cop. Yeah. I, I what situation is made better by putting another shooter in it? Yeah. You know? And who was that guy on your meme? He was so much fun. That's it's confusing because that's a friend of mine from high school and we were best friends and we hung out all the time and I'm, yeah. I thought he was a minority. Okay. So it's weird that now suddenly he's just been randomly popping up in my comments of Facebook going against the things I'm posting. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a bit confusing. Yeah. That was Jono. That was so much fun. Yeah, it was. I was just watching it unfold. Like, literally, we're all just sitting here in the living room, and I'm going, there's a fight happening on my Facebook page right now? No, there wasn't. That's what was beautiful. He thought it was a fight. I was helping him. That's exactly how I saw it. And that's that in the end is like what really pissed him off is that I never once challenged his point. I yes. never once said he was wrong. Yeah, I, I didn't say anything like that. I, I, I was, I was, I put him in a high school English class. Is yeah, all I, I just, did. Yeah, and I was just watching it all unfold, and then finally, um, Jono got upset and goes, "Hey, hey, hey, buddy, hey, bunny, are you high or something?" And that's when I chimed in. And I'm like. He probably is, but that shouldn't take away from his point. Okay, continue. <laughs> and then John. Oh, and then, but then you just. And then John was like, oh, but you see my point, right, Steve? You see my point? And, I, and that's when I got to use my favorite Pulp Fiction. Book. Yes, and I loved it. My name's Paul, and this shit's between y'all. <laughs> you guys just have fun with this. And. I'll be over here in the corner <laughs> watching. Oh, it was now. so much fun because because yeah. he he came out with a. Well, I think this meme is is racist against white people, white sports fans, Ugh. and I was just like, okay, good, good, okay. Now, justify in your meme in the meme why you've taken that position. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what was pissing them off. <laughs> yeah. 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 You were just trying to get him to show his work. Exactly. Mm. He was upset about that. But see, now we've we're we're we, we are so in the upside down right now that yeah. rednecks are leaving the NFL and many liberals are defending it. So can't you see it, Bunny? Can't you see the world where all of the hipsters and liberals and millennials are now packing the NFL stadiums every Sunday? I, I refuse. I refuse. Can't you see that? Where we're suddenly like, like, like tailgating an NFL game is there are all these people in the parking lot of the stadium eating like focaccia bread? Yeah. And and foie gras. And uh, oh, hey, bring a hibachi. Yes, hey, I'm ma- hey you want to come over here? We're grilling, we're grilling some Seven. locally sourced soy burgers. <laughs> and then the game happens, but there's no cheering because everybody's just taking selfies, yeah, and posting on Instagram instead of watching the actual game until finally well- you get. To- until finally you get to the middle and it's just, it's halftime. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mumford and Sons. And then finally, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. For the game itself, I was kind of picturing more like, well, 
I really like the Jets, but I don't think it's right to shame the Bengals. Nice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're trying. <laughs> oh, hey, our team won. Whoa, watch out there. You, you shouldn't claim a team like that. All teams are everyone's teams. <laughs> we, really, we really shouldn't take sides here. Yeah. <laughs> Sports are, are about hard work and and uh, you know being a part of a team. It's not about who wins and who loses. That's just unfair to people. That's right. That's but then right. the rednecks. But then the rednecks are upset that they lost sports, so they start invading things that the left likes. So suddenly you go into like record stores and it's filled with all these drunk, angry rednecks. Yeah. You go into like a comic book store and it's all like white trash comics. <laughs> you got that there uh Superman? Oh, you mean the new Superman where where he's a, not a alien, he's an American who was bitten <laughs> by a radioactive super guy? And then Here's here's the thing that I can really see happening. Yeah. Uh, rednecks fall in love with Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> rednecks embrace Dungeons and Dragons to get at the liberals who have taken over NFL. So suddenly, you walk inside, you find yourself in an empty field. <laughs> you, your right is a mountain. If you look closely, you can see a cave on the side of the mountain. What do you do? I fire my guns in the air. You do not have any guns. Okay, well, I create some. All right, well, that will take a roll of 12 or higher. Yeah. You roll a 14. Great, I shoot my guns in the air. You'll have to wait for your next turn, Clem. If That's what I'm hoping to see. Yeah. If we have to take possession of the NFL, you know, I, I'm not particularly happy with it, but there are some things that we could do. You know, streamers on the helmets would be kind of nice, you know? There's light up things like, ten like kids have on their tennis shoes, you know, and they walk and they light yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be, especially for Here's night games. Idea. But, but, I yeah. refuse. I refuse to ever take possession of NASCAR. Yes. yes. What's the deal with that? Cars going around in circles. Yeah. For three hours. What? But <clears throat> here's an idea I had for the NFL. If liberals are going to take over the NFL, then I think we need to stop these concussions. That's why everyone, all of the football players are in hamster balls. <laughs> <laughs> I, like those, I like that. Are those like zoom balls? You know what I'm talking about? Those like ones that blow up. What are they called? Those blow up balls, and then you're rolling in them. One of yeah. those. I, I know yeah, what you're every talking football about. Football player has one. Hmm. Yeah, that's how we we are going to solve the concussion problem. What if we put them in really really big foam helmets? You know, like the ones that they used to to train attack dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I could see. No, we put them in one of those big, huge suits, like a like a yeah, like an attack dog training. All of them have those big, huge, massive suits. And yeah. so the way I picture it is, if everyone has one of those suits, then all of these big, huge, buff, muscular men are suddenly running around the field like toddlers. <laughs> you know they're waddling and they can't put their arms down <laughs> and they fall over a lot <laughs> yeah like babies like little babies what about those blow up uh, samurai suits yeah those blow yeah. up samurai suits yeah. yeah I'd watch that <laughs> yeah we have already we have already fixed football yes. it's amazing We've barely thought about it. Not ready. 
we have fixed football. It's amazing. We're we're geniuses, basically. Well, I'm kind of sorry that the the XFL failed. Ah, oh, the XFL. I, I was looking forward to that shit. Yeah, the XFL. Yeah. Apparently, the XFL was just created so that Stone Cold Steve Austin could wear obscure shirts in his 40s and 50s. <laughs> Because every once in a while, you'll still see like a like Stone Cold Steve Austin like doing an interview on TV or something, and he's wearing like a Toledo Iron Horses shirt or whatever the fuck the the XFL teams are. You know, it's hilarious. 